Thanks for staying with us. Let's talk about the latest developments with the U.S. election. Journalist and public affairs analyst Habib Aruna and a lecturer with the LBJ School of Public Affairs at the University of Texas, Afonso Rojas Afonso, uh, joined me on the program. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, gentlemen, thank you for staying with us on the show. Let me begin with you, Mr. Aruna. Uh, some would say it's a matter of when and not if um, the U.S. president was going to step down following his, his performance at the last debate. But let's begin with the reaction trailing a stepping down. What rulers, what leaders are full of praises are saying that he's a listener and someone who's put his country first. But for Republicans, they are saying, if you are not fit to run, then you should step down. What do you make of this development? <clears throat> the, the exit of President of the US, Joe Biden, is another affirmation that the United States and its politics has a way of reinventing itself. You know, the, the, there have been crises in the past few days and weeks in the U.S. getting the race to the presidential election. Between the presumed winner, between former President Donald Trump and the current President Joe Biden, and the, the, the debate and the factor match, Right, gave room for many people to be pressurized to pressurize Joe Biden to step down, you know, and it's, it's as it increasingly became inevitable, which happened yesterday. Of course, you expect the, the, the Republican to so, talking about that Biden should resign. That is, by the way, Biden only showed up that he is a decent man, that is a pragmatic politician. Biden exit from the race shows that American politicians, most, most of them, not minus Trump anyway, that they have their country at heart, that the interest of their country is more prominent in the way they think. Biden led the race, it's better for his party, better for democracy, and better for America as a whole. So I think we should, we should expect the Republicans to play politics in this exit. So it should be expected. But the way of manner the, the, the party receives it right. shows that it has energized the party, you know, and they're looking forward to present the candidate. Harris is not given yet, but it's, it's a possibility that Kamala Harris will eventually be the nominee All right. the party. Let me bring Mr. Alvarez into this conversation. You must have heard Donald Trump play down on, the, um, on Kamala being a potential threat to him winning this election and the conversation is out there whether she's she's um, a fair match or not but in the few days she's been able to raise 49.6 million dollars in grassroots donations local media is reporting to have identified more than 500 endorsements from within our party what do you consider our chances yes thank you kamala harris right now has an outpour of enthusiasm from the Democratic Party, not only from the basis, from especially young and minority voters, which compose a key constituency in the Democratic Party, but also, as you mentioned, from key leaders within the Democratic Party. 156 members of Congress have already endorsed her, 32 senators and 11 governors in the Democratic Party. So what we will see in the coming few weeks is how does Kamala Harris, as the strongest contender, to replace Joe Biden in the Democratic ticket fares in the polls. How does she fare in speeches? How does she fare in contrast to Donald Trump? And by the time of the August 19th Democratic Convention, the delegates will make a decision based on that information. So everyone right now is supporting her, and we will see if she's up to the to the challenge. And if for some reason uh, it, it crumbles or her support doesn't take off from a, from the numbers perspective, then the Democrats will have to make a decision during the convention. Well, looking at the highest ranking woman ever in American politics, do you think that the sentiment of a first woman would uh, play a significant role here? Yes, absolutely. Yesterday at, at 1.46 uh, Eastern time, when Joe Biden uh, made the historic decision to drop out of the presidential race merely 106 days before the election, he not only made history by that decision, but 20 minutes later, he endorsed uh, his vice president, Kamala Harris, 
the first uh, African American woman and first Indian American woman to lead a ticket for a major party. So this is definitely history in the making. We have lived through uh, an extraordinary unprecedented month in American politics, and Kamala Harris' candidacy just reinforces that we are living through unprecedented times. Uh, and it is still to be seen whether that will reflect in majority support for her during the November election. Mr. Aruna, you think that Joe Biden stepping down is a plus for the uh, Democratic Party, but this is also happening just about three months to the election in November. How do you see this impact on the party's chances? I, 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 I see it as a boost to the chances of the, of the party. You know, the, for the party leaders and some of the senators and House of Rest members mm. were already voicing concern about how Biden's candidates will affect the party down the line, down the balance. You know, and I think it's as it has galvanized a lot of people in the, in the party and animated the spirit within the, the Democratic Party. And when my, when my word, the, the, my friend said in, in the US, look at the amount of money that they, they, they've been able to gather in the past 24 hours and the support the human is having. I think the Republicans, the GOP, are having nightmare now, which is, which is, which is likely emergence. So it's a big plus for the party. Some have said it's a function of how you, you know, weave the narrative where you consider um, the many fallouts from the last debate and how attention has been turned to the age and well-being of the incumbent president. Uh, I'll talk more about how much impact his exit will have on the party's chances. Um, what narratives do you think would work in favor of, of his party? Well, to me, to me, the fact that Biden left the race gracefully, patriotically, in a decent way, it's a big plus of both the party and American democracy, and by extension, the world at large. That in itself, as I said, we galvanize the party, we galvanize the youths who, who, saw, who, who saw Biden as someone that is too frail, too old to, to, to beat Trump. Now there's a new woman, a 29 years old woman, who has a record, a DA California, California Attorney General, a senator, and now vice president. And Presumably, the party's presidential candidate. So I see it as a as a big boost for the party, and I'm sure the GOP are afraid now. That's why they are they are, they are forgetting about this uh, likely emergence. So, Mr. Alvarez, what do you think? Um, the the president of the United States is stepping down to be replaced by the vice president, who potentially could be the first female president for the USA. Um, is he it? Is he a plus for the Democrats? Um, will you consider the fact that um, they now have a new candidate three months to election day? Yes, um, seventy-five percent of Americans wanted Joe Biden to drop out. Sixty percent of Americans wanted to have a choice that was not between Donald Trump and Joe Biden. So, in that sense, Joe Biden's decision and the Democratic Party can con can consolidate themselves as the party that listens to the will of Americans, the party that is providing a younger candidate, the party that is providing someone who is not Donald Trump or Joe Biden, and someone who allows the country to move forward and to turn the page on the years of polarization that we have lived under the Trump and even the Biden administration. So in that sense, the Democratic Party can make the argument and the contrast with the Republican Party by saying, we are the grown up party. We are the party that is listening to the interests and the needs of the American population in contrast to a Republican Party that just a few days ago had a Republican convention that was basically a coronation and a cult of personality for the figure of Donald Trump. Now, whether they will be able to condense that support to make the difference in key battleground states to win the election, that is to be seen. But definitely the Democratic Party starting now has the upper hands in terms of the discourse and in terms of hearing the needs of the American population. You know, a potential first female president with a signature laughter. That's how some people put it. But the, she's already started shopping for a potential VP. What do you think are the criteria the Democrats will be considering? So there are four main uh, uh, candidates to be Kamala Harris's vice president. And the, the key characteristic that the four of them have is that they are white men uh, to contrast uh, the fears that a lot of the population have based on historic uh, trends of racism and sexism in America. 
Um, so Mark Kelly, senator from Arizona, is one of them. Josh Shapiro, the governor of Pennsylvania, Andy Bashir, the governor of Kentucky, and Roy Cooper, the governor of North Carolina. The three that I mentioned at the end are also uh, uh, governors that hold support in the Midwestern states that the Democratic Party needs in order to win the election. So if Kamala Harris gets one of them, she will be able to make the argument that she has support and that she's listening to the voices of those in the Midwest in contraposition to herself, which is a person from California and will be attacked for being a liberal elite from the West Coast that, that, that people in the Midwest tend to have some reservations to. So in this sense, the election and the selection of a vice presidential candidate can complement some of the weaknesses that we know Kamala Harris might have in a general election. Mr. Aruna, the older of the two candidates stepped down when they were concerned about his health and his ability to deliver for his party. Are there lessons here, political lessons here, um, across the continent? Absolutely, absolutely. You see, there's a big lesson for us to learn in the third world countries, particularly Africa and Nigeria. You see, the most powerful man on earth, the US president, that amount of pressure, decided to leave the race. You know, he has enough power to say, I'm not leaving. And nothing, nothing will happen to me. But this man is a decent, is a decent person. He's very pragmatic and knows the meaning of that to both the, the country and the party. You know, he was this was patriotic enough to know the, to know that yes, I have to go to save my party and my country and by extension democracy. And so the big lesson for us in Africa is that people are always sitting tight. They won't. I can bend the constitution to stay, to stay in office. Mm. So I hope they are, they are watching what is going on in America. So America is a brand which all of us must learn from. Gentlemen, thank you for talking to us. Journalist and public affairs analyst Abib Aruna, lecturer at the LBJ School of Public Affairs at the University of Texas, Afonso Rojas Abares. Uh, thank you for your thoughts. Thank you. Thank you.